Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to this tiny garage. It seems appropriate to go back to last week. Here we go then folks, we're gonna flip it over. Thank you Ali, thank you Tori. All right. And action. All right, here we go. With a lot of help from some willing, strong people, we got the bearing carrier into the bank one half. Anyway, back to reality. We have to cut these old cylinder head bolts because they're too long because we're not gonna be using them to hold the cylinder head on. Cleaning up the threads there with the stainless steel brush. And then I got these bolts from the local auto parts store. They're M10 1.5s. And we need four of them, so four lots of the cutting. And this will start making more sense as it did to me once Lee Jenkins at Hartech UK explained this to me. What we're doing here is holding the bearing carrier in place while we do things. So that's what one side looks like with them loosely attached. And then we can now stand the bank one side up and the bearing carrier won't fall out. There's the bearing carrier in there. And these are our beautifully chopped off bolts. Thank you very much Lee Jenkins at Hartec UK for that top tip. Zip tie cutting, always a satisfying task. We don't need this chain held in place anymore. It needs to be set free for now. I was concerned that the pump side of the IMS would fall out, but it seems more or less held in place for now. We are now working towards reassembly of this engine and we're gonna put the bearing carrier bolts back in. That's the one in the top that has the grommet on it. And then there's the one in the bottom. They're both T50 Torx. I'm using some of our remaining ARP lube to go on the threads of that. Just might as well while I have some left. Hand tightening that guy went in pretty easy. And then same with the bottom one. That one goes in the chain area there. There's two bolts like this on bank one, but on the bank two side, there's only one. Okay, in one of the photocopies that you wonderful people have sent me, it does seem to suggest that the additional bearing carrier bolts should be 22 Newton meters. That sounds like a pretty good number to me, so I'm gonna go with 22 Newton meters for both of these T50 bolts that are holding the bearing carrier to bank one. Oh no, piston assembly. That means wrist pin circlips. You can see here that the bank two side is just kind of dangling. These are the con rods, pretty much how they came back from the machine shop. We do have to take off the ARP con rod bolts once again. Just checking that the caps are the right way around and then I'm marking those with those fancy Sharpie markers that subscriber David Gray sent last week. Thank you, David. Putting them to use so I know which way is the top and which cap goes on what. Here I'm removing one of the old wrist pin circlips to practice with. We are gonna get new wrist pin circlips but I wanna have a go with this mystery tool and an old circlip just in case I mangle it. Now that flange, that's part of this black pipe, it fits easily in one side, not so easily in the other side. The long metal pipe goes all the way through, no problem. It's basically the same size and everything as the wrist pin itself. This is one of the old circlips I'm gonna practice with. The task sounds simple. You squish the circlip into this flange and make it sit perfectly with a little tab sticking out at the side. This infuriatingly simple step was by far the most challenging aspect of this week's engine rebuild. So that's more or less how I ended up doing it. Sandwiching the circlip between the tool and a wrist pin. And then giving that a whack, I gave it one whack just to see and it wasn't quite right. It was sort of in, but not quite in. 
second whack and it was good so I'm much less afraid of the sir clips now that did sort of make sense after referencing the notes I made taking this apart that word Germany needs to face the opposite way to the word Germany on the conrod and then that means we can put our wrist pin in and that means we need new wrist pin circlips and that means we get to go to the Porsche dealer they have very pretty pictures on the wall I did find that they have a second floor this week and hidden away on that second floor is an actual Carrera as shiny and new as this looks, it's actually a used 2019 model. Certified, of course. It has 9,500 miles on it. It's a 991 Turbo S in Carrera white with these fantastic gloss black accents. While it's listed as an automatic, in fairness, it is a 7-speed PDK or dual-clutch transmission car. Power comes from a 580 horsepower flat six. That's almost double the power of the Carrera that we're working on. And that gets this car from zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Of course, there is another number involved and that would be $210,000 for this ever so slightly used 911 Turbo S. Sadly, of course, we're actually here for six circlips. So let's get on with it. Wrist pin circlip installation. Here they are. I don't really know if you have to have new ones, but I really felt it was a good idea to get some fresh ones. Now that we've practiced, it's time to actually put them in. This side apparently is the easy side because you can see what you're doing. The part people say is more challenging is when we have to do this same kind of thing for bank two, but we won't be able to see what we're doing. And it's like building a ship in a bottle with a blindfold on. Here we go then, loading up one of these sir clips. This is probably as good as it ever went for me. This was a very frustrating part of the process. Okay, so it's all lined up with the little tang sticking out of the hole. These are flooring samples that just happen to be an arrangeable height. There's my two bash approach, which does seem to do the job. It's now time to put the piston rings onto this piston. For more detail on what I'm doing, take a look at episode 26, the pistons and valves episode. I'm actually working off a screenshot from that episode because I'd forgotten what I did. Putting on the oil scraper ring here, the ABC sandwich, which is the very bottom ring. Next then is our lower compression ring that has a different shape on the edge and it has a top marking on it. So we're gonna make that be on the top. That one, the open side of the ring has to line up with a notch on the piston. There it is right there, a little metal pin. And I'm reliably informed because we are using the stock pistons with the stock cylinders and stock rings that we don't need to gap the rings. And so I shan't bore you with that step. I did check a couple of them. Looks like we're good. I'm not going to go through and gap every single one of them. Some graphogen then on our new wrist pin bushings and inside the pistons there where the wrist pin will be. And again, lining up the Germany and making Germany on the Conrad be on the opposite side is just my personal way of making sure I have them the right way around with the dots on the top there. And now this is for real. We're putting the wrist pin in. And then trying to make it as level as possible. Here's our, here's another new wrist pin all lined up in there a few swear words later to be honest and then giving it a swift bang bang now it it didn't quite go all the way in the wrist pin kind of got pushed up 
and stopped it from going home, but then another couple of bashes with the wrist pin pushed down, and it was good. Okay then, we're going to take off the Conrod cap, and now we're going to use lots of regular motor oil as our lube in the cylinder bore itself. Putting that on with one of our lint-free Kimtech wipes, and I'm being generous with the oil. All over the piston as well, trying to get the rings pretty saturated. And all the conrod as well. Just to give the lubrication system a head start. All right, now we're gonna use our tapered piston ring compressor. It's 3.780 inches diameter, but that is 96 millimeters and it does seem to work. With a little drizzle more of oil for good measure, we are then using that tapered ring compressor to help us push the rings together and get the piston into the cylinder bore. On the other side there, you can see that the conrod is ready to have the conrod cap attached. Those are the ARP conrod bolts to prevent any conrod stretching. They're also a little lighter. In the end, a system that worked for me was to rotate the crankshaft so that the journal for whatever piston I was putting on was as close to the cylinder bore as possible and centralized. Then put the piston in, get the conrod on the journal, snug down the bolts of the conrod cap, and then rotate the crankshaft out so that you can get to those bolts more easily. Now we're gonna do cylinder two piston. I put one of the new wrist pin circlips in the small side of the piston. Then we need to put the rings onto this one, which we have the oil scraper ring, then the lower compression ring, and the upper compression ring. Next, we're putting graphogen on everything, and we've got another wrist pin to go into the big side. Then some graphogen on the big end bearing and the cap, then oiled everything up and poked that in there. And then from this side, you can see it's tapping with the rubber end of a hammer. And once everything's kind of lined up, it, it does go together pretty easy. Like here we go. Once I've got the conrod on and tightened down like snug, then I rotate it all the way around this side to torque it up. And those, of course, from the instructions on the ARP bolts, it's 45 foot-pounds. Okay, here we go. This is cylinder three now. Putting one of the new circlips in the small side. Then it needs its rings as well, starting at the bottom, working my way towards the top. There's the lower compression ring. Then 180 degrees around from that, we put the upper compression ring on. Then greasing up all the wrist pin section. Got a new circlip there for the bigger hole, for lack of a better word. Next then, greasing that up with generous amounts of motor oil. Then tapping away on that one while trying to make sure it lines up on the other end. It got easier as I went along. Eventually it just gives in. And then there I'm snugging up those 10 millimeter ARP bolts and then rotating it around so I can get a better grip on it to torque it up. I am really enjoying that torque wrench. Very helpful. And that's it. Almost looks like an engine. As long as you only look from this side, it looks pretty impressive. Thank you very much to everybody for your help. We're getting there. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. Please, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and tune in next week.
What did I even say the first time? I don't even know. Woo! Woo! All right, we should just throw some potatoes in here. Lanta B, 